Well, thanks for watching this episode of Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series about evangelism and discipleship. We're highlighting ministries all around the world that are serious about that, hoping that you'd get a couple revelations. First of all, God is still working. Second of all, there's a part for you to be playing within the body of Christ. Today, we're in Asheville, North Carolina, visiting Western Carolina Rescue Ministries, and with me is Pastor Michael Woods. Pastor Woods, thank you so much for letting Annette and I spend a couple days with you guys. Oh, well, you know, thank you for being here. This, is, this has really been an exciting time. Um, you know, there's a lot going on here at the ministry right now, and, um, and I'm just glad that you all were able to come. Amen. Well, every city, I believe, needs a gospel rescue mission. You know, <laughs> homelessness is, is everywhere. Jesus yes. said you'll always have the poor among you. And I know we want to work yeah. ourselves out of a job, but there'll always be that opportunity. So yeah. how would you describe the vision and the mission and the heartbeat around here? Well, you know, um, you know, you know, our vision is really simple. Um, we, we, we want to love people. And we believe that in everything that we do, love has to be at the forefront. It has to, it actually has to be the why, why we do what we do. Anything not done in love is done wrong, any and everything. Right. And so for us, for us, we want, we, want to, we want to engage people where they are, love them the way that Jesus would love them mm -hmm. so, that they would, so that they would have the opportunity to encounter a risen, a live Savior, mm -hmm. accept Him as Lord. And, and we deal with people, the poverty that's in this city. And if, if you ride around the city, you see, you see, a, lot of, you see a lot of wealth and, and riches and, and, a, and extravagance. Mm -hmm. but, but, but we're dealing with, we're dealing with those that are, that are in the depths of poverty and they've lost hope. They, they have massive issues that they, they need help to overcome. And right. the, and, and the proper help is Jesus. Right. And we're loving them. We're loving them right into his arms. And it's and, a holistic ministry, physically, yes. spiritually, and emotionally. Yes. yes. And, and so, so we're doing that. We're not just, um, we're not just feeding and clothing and sheltering. And we do those things and we do those things very well when we do them in love. But we're also engaging them where, where they've been stuck with life issues and where, where I'm counseling, where I'm job training, we're creating skills, we're helping them with, we're, we're helping them to engage um, to engage dreams, yeah. you know, you, you know, um, we have a program and, and the whole program is designed around dreaming again, yeah. you know, teaching people to dream. And so, right. and, and well, the enemy wants to, to steal it. that from you, right? So he's a, <laughs> he's a chump. He's oh, trying yeah. to steal, kill and destroy <laughs> whatever it. he can. And that's it. You, you get a, a vision blurry or a dream stolen and it's a victory for him. That's it. That's it. And we're, you know, um, and we watch how the enemy has been able to, been able to um, steal from people's lives, but we feel like the moment that they walk through this door, yeah. that that the enemy's lost. And if we can engage them and let them know that this is a loving place, that this is a place where they're going to be loved, they're gonna they're gonna learn they're gonna learn that God loves them and that we love them, and and it's and it's unconditional love. Um, and, and the enemy has no answer for that. He really has no answer. And, and, as, the, and as the body of Christ, and we see ourselves as an extension of the church mm -hmm. and that we're front lines from that standpoint. But, but as the body of Christ engages, engages individuals in that way, realizing, realizing that the enemy is out to kill them, to steal from them and to destroy their lives. But, but, but we have the answer. We have the ability to, to introduce them to Christ. And I'm Amen. excited about that. And God is love and love is a game changer. That's it. That's Amen. it. Amen. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about Western Carolina Rescue Ministries and how they're being salt and light here in Asheville, North Carolina. Keep watching. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call, 888-641-8606, or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations. We're in Asheville, North Carolina with the Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. With me, Pastor Michael Woods. So when we talk about evangelism, sharing the gospel, it's easy when it's word and deed. And you certainly have a lot of opportunity to do some deeds. So talk about your approach to sharing the gospel. Well, you know, um, 
you know, we do um, we do have a lot of classes and 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 there's a lot of teaching that goes on here on a on a day by day on a day by day basis. But but evangelism for us is in engaging people in relationships. Mm-hmm. And so um, and so um, people people um, people who come in, they are they are engaged from a standpoint. Our staff, our staff wants to really get to know people mm-hmm. and wants to want to really help them where they are. But at the same time, we're willing to be transparent about our lives. Right. And so that people people can begin to trust. And when they can trust us, they can receive. And we're just willing to willing to be whatever God wants us to be. We have a lot of different ways of doing that. Um, you know, um, you know, when people come in and, and all they need is shelter, it seems like at that point, we want to be more than just shelter. And so in order for someone to be able to stay here for, for, for any length of time, they have to get, get with one of our rescue counselors. All of my, all of my counselors are pastors. Yeah. Um, and, so, and, so, and so we don't know how to do anything other than being pastors and, and other than loving people. And that's what we want to do. So we want to engage people exactly where they are and begin to, and begin to disciple them in that way. And, so, yeah. and, and as we can introduce them to a, introduce them to a loving God who who has stepped into wherever their situation is, whatever that circumstance is, we believe that this ministry, um, this, this ministry is a part of the way that God, God, God is loving people. I, I, I say this statement all the time yeah. is that, is that I don't believe that, that the Western Carolina rescue ministry was God's best for anybody. Mm-hmm. But what I do believe is that, is that, is that this rescue ministry is a manifestation of God's love towards his people. Grace. And so and so when people come and if they can and if they can experience the manifested love of God, mm-hmm. man, that's evangelism mm-hmm. because it takes hold, it takes root and they want him. Yeah. And that's that's how we do it. Yeah, you can't escape those first few words in John 3:16 for God so loved, loved the world, Yes. you know. So it's a catch net. So talk a little bit about the feeding programs and the clothing closet. Well, yeah, great. I mean, we um, we're the we're the largest um, homeless shelter in 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 the Western North Carolina area. Um, we um, we 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 have over 500 people that engage our ministry every single day. Um, we're feeding we're feeding um, easily 500 and 500 to 550 meals a day, um, depending upon um, you know the weather. Um, you, you know plays a lot in that. Um, we're giving out four. 400 plus articles of clothing every single week. People ask why so much clothing. Um, you know, literally, if if you're on the streets of Asheville, you know, clothing becomes becomes a disposable item. Um, most people don't don't realize it, but you know, you know, um, you know, you know, if you're on the streets, you're gonna wear those clothes until they're till they can't be worn anymore right. and you don't get to go to the laundry man you don't get to, so those those right. things there so so we offer showers we offer all the hygiene um, things and, and and then and and then a place for people to sleep right. um you know we're um you know we are, we're sleeping anywhere from 140 to 180 people a night and that's men women and children we're providing all the wraparound services that are there we want people to be secure we want them to be warm we want them to be safe right. and we want them to be loved and so that's that those are just the rescue side of what we do right and then when you take care of that now their ears are open to hear what you've got to say yes Amen. Yes. You got chapel services. Yes. So yes. someone's bringing the word. You got different churches coming yes. in and sharing the gospel. Yeah, actually, what what we've done, um, um, and we have some great chapel services. Our chapels, um, um, you know, um, every every Monday morning, I do a chapel at at um, nine a.m. and that's open to every everyone. But then every night, seven days a week, three hundred and sixty-five days a year, at six p.m., um, the word of God is is being taught, and and so. So what we've done is that is, is that we've went out and sought some of the best teachers out there. That apps, um, um, so it's not just churches that actually come. We, um, you know, I have this tendency that I like going, and I I spend a lot of time at a lot of different churches. Um, but I always it, I always want 
want someone that's going to come teach here that the pastor, if it's, if it's not the pastor himself, I want someone that he'll put in front of his congregation. Right. I don't want it to be someone that, that he's saying, hey, go cut your teeth down at the rescue mission. Right. I want the very best coming. And so, and I want a loving message. I want, I want people that are going to teach, teach truth, but, but I'm teaching in love. And so, and so we've, we've um, through the years, We've kind of narrowed down um, a great group of men and women that that will come in and teach, and and they'll they'll bring music and sing, and and they're very relational, and our people are grateful for it, and they build relationships there. So so the word of God is being taught, and people are being saved, and we're you know we're able to um, we're able to baptize people, and yeah. and things are really really good from that standpoint. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews, talk a little bit more about evangelism and sharing the gospel and word and deed here at Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call. 888-641-8606 or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations. We're talking about discipleship next with Pastor Michael Woods here at Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. Big word, discipleship. What is your take on it? Well, you know, um, it's, it's literally awakening the, the gifts and the purpose and the plans of God on the inside of people, training them up so that they can go forth and do the will of God. You know, it's exactly what 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 we've been called to ministry to do, to 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 equip people to go do the work of the ministry. Right. And that's discipleship. And we we actually do it in a lot of different ways here. And and a lot of people, um, a lot of people, um, you know, when they think of when they think of our population, they only see they, they only see see the homeless individuals and, and we engage them. But our desire is to be able to equip them so that they can go go out and fulfill their purpose and their destiny right. that God has for them. So we use our classes. Um, we have what we call Success Academy. And and that's and we engage both men and women um, that are that are a part of the homeless population, along with those that are in our recovery and restoration programs. And though and and that's kind of an intense training. Um, but mm -hmm. but and we take more of a of a um, of a Christian worldview. We bring mm -hmm. in we bring in maybe financial training and everything, but we're going to teach it from right. a Christian perspective. Right. We bring in, um, you know, job training, but we're going to teach it from a Christian perspective. Right. And, and, and we're engaging them by, by awakening what's on the inside of them. And, and then we have our, our recovery program. Right. Our recovery programs are, you know, you know, we have a 12 month residential recovery program. And, yeah. and, and, with, and within that program, it's literally a one year Bible college course yeah, yeah. i mean these guys are engaged in the word we have i mean i mean i mean top-notch bible teachers that actually come in um you know my staff is incredible uh, yeah. um, from that and so and then we have our restoration programs um which is the which is which is the Abba's Love Program for, for our ladies, and that's a nine to twelve month program. And again, Bible training, and yeah. so and so, and we're and we're engaging them not just in what we're teaching them, but then once they're learning, we actually take them out to serve. So right. they go out and serve, and, and they be they begin to be confident, and they're trained in that way. So we're excited. We we have a lot of great fruit that's come from our programs. Yeah. So you have women and children. Yes. And men. Yes. And uh, are you working with some families as well? Yes, we are. And we want to be able to um, to uh, minister to the entire family. And so, um, and in being able to help people understand relationships and, and be able to create a solid family. You know, a lot of times when families come to us and, and whatever the cause that, 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 that may have caused them to end up here. Um, yeah, we're going to help try to solve the immediate issue. But if but if we don't engage them in a relational way and begin and and begin to help unravel some stuff in their lives, yeah. they're going to go down a path that's not going to glorify God. Right. And we
we want them to glorify God. We, we don't want being at a shelter, especially, especially for a child. We don't want this to be a traumatic experience that, that becomes a stumbling block in their life. We want this to be a launching pad for them right. so that yeah. they can go forth and be all that God has intended right. for them to be. Yeah, we were talking about that this morning, too, is that uh, when he sends them out, he sends them out two by two. Yes. And, and a lot of times your misery becomes your ministry. Yes, yes. And, and, and you know, and a lot of that we see, you know, when, when we, you know, we, a lot of the people that we see in our restoration programs and our recovery programs um, have at some, some point in their childhood, um, um, you know, they've, they've been, they've been sexually abused and a lot of the a lot of the addictions have come from those type of things um kind of being the start um and and we treat addiction as we treat addiction as not as as not as the presenting problem as the major problem the addiction is only an is only an outward sign of something deeper so we want to engage them deeper in that in, in those things. And when we begin to deal with those traumas and those issues, and they begin to allow Jesus to heal, heal that, because we can't, yeah, right. we can't, there's, there's not a formula for it. So you got to be able to, to love them to the place to where they will allow Jesus into that moment right. and, and, to, and to be healed. And when they do that, then they, then they want life the way that God intended for them to have it. Right. And that's exciting. They start making better choices at that no point. No question. Amen. And then no the question. sowing and reaping takes from there. Good Amen. choices and that's it. good that's reaping. It. Amen. That's good. Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship from some of the staff and some of the folks that are in the program here at Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call. 888-641-8606 or take a look at our website revelationstv.org Well thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations. We're really excited about what God is doing here in Asheville, North Carolina through the Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. Pastor Michael Woods, I know you've got that heart to get people to get involved. There's certainly some projects that you certainly need people to help with. Yes. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about ways they can plug in and, and offer their time, treasure, and talents around here. Well, you know, um, you know we, we are constantly in need of people praying. We can never have too many people praying. I say it all the, all the time. My grandmother, um, my grandmother um, um, several years ago, um, she, um, she said to me, she said, um, when I was going through a difficult time, she said, Michael, do you believe prayer works? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, then pray. And so I need people to pray. Yeah. Um, especially people who believe that prayer works. You know, the other thing is that we need we need people we need people to be creative in their in the way that they think. Um, um, think about the ministry. I mean, I mean, you, you would be surprised at a lot of people. A, a lot of people would think that that their gifts and their skills and their talents wouldn't be usable here. We can use any and everybody that's willing yeah. willing to come be a part. And the other and the other way is we need financial support. Um, you know, and we need we, we need resources, not just money, but but even things. Um, and we're able to be able to use those things and multiply their value in being able to engage people. Yeah. And so and so if we could get people to just to just be a part you know, and, and to just help us. Um, you know, we don't have a large staff and we are seeing so many people, but we couldn't do it if we didn't have people who were willing to come in and volunteer, people that would just help us to be able to help people. And so right. and so that's 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 needed every day here yeah. for us. So it's a community ministry, and I like how you're inviting community to get involved and be a part of yes. you know the hands and feet. You have some building projects going on, yes. so building resources, contractors, all that kind of stuff as yes. well. Yes, yes, yes. We, I mean, we need people who can paint. We need people who can, um, you know, you know, can be able to take a project from point A to all the way to point Z for us. Yeah. Um, um, and then we need resources, people, people who can. People who can help us maneuver through some of the permitting process and yeah. um, um, and 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 be able to you know 
be able to um, be able just to help us, right. you know, you know, even even put color on walls from yeah. that standpoint. So. I saw some of the build out rooms and I yeah. felt like looking over to you. Sorry, bro. Can't help you. I don't yeah. even know what the next step is. And <laughs> I hope you got some smart people around you, well, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah. there's God gives people and wired people, you know, different. Right. Yes. So. No question whatsoever. And, our, you know, our next project, I mean, we're we're trying to, um, you know, you know, we're moving and we're moving into to our um, new facility for overnight shelter for for um, for um, women and children, mm -hmm. um, and then we have a new portion for our men. But we're excited about what we're getting ready to walk into next, which is which is um, transitional housing, um, where where we can we can have people here um, for our women and children, especially we can have them here, stabilize them where they are, make sure the right child care, everything's around them so that so that they can be engaged, we can get them in school, we can we can get them stable in jobs and, and they get the right service in a protected environment. And so that's 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 where we are. We're already stepping into it. Um, I'm already past that because um, we need more housing. We need, but but we need the ability to be able to engage people where they are, so that so that they don't get stuck in poverty. Um, and so, um, yeah. you know, any any resources that can help us do that, I mean, I mean, we yeah. would be grateful for. A hand up instead of just a handout. No question. No question. We don't want to enable people, right. and that's and that's the key. You know, um, um, I mean, in in 2010, um, when when I accepted this position, um, you know, and, and the Lord gave me a vision. Um, you know, you know, the Lord, the, the the gist of that vision was was to love them the way that Jesus would love them, and and I and I looked at that that for years we had. We as a ministry, um, the ministry has, has been around since 1981 and, and, and the philosophy as, as, as times change um, kind of went to a point to where we were just warehousing the homeless. We no longer wanted to warehouse the homeless. That's not the vision that God, right. that God has for people. It's all he, about transformation. It's all about transformation. Yeah. And so we, we literally want to help those that are trying to help themselves. And we have a population, about 42% of, of our population on the street right now, um, they are mentally ill. And so we know that some of those individuals that we serve on a daily basis, that if we're not there for them, that they're they are the most vulnerable on the street. They're mm -hmm. the ones that are that are going to that are going to be assaulted and attacked and killed. So 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 we have programs here and, and things here where we've engaged them and created family and community around them because because we we don't have facilities in this area for them. And God has commanded us to love them right. and to love them in a in a way so that they can be healthy and engage him. And so and so I'm I'm real excited excited about what God's doing here and, and and I really believe that he's using this ministry as a catalyst to be able to 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 be able to to cause revival to, to um, spread all throughout the city amen to that amen well, keep watching we're going to talk about ways you too can get involved with Carolina Rescue Ministries and be a part of uh, this great harvest before the glorious return of Jesus Christ If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call, 888-641-8606, or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org. Thanks again for watching this episode of Revelations and Pastor Woods. Thank you so much for letting us uh, spend some time and thank you. talk with your team. You guys got some amazing people on the front lines thank being hands so and feet here. So behind every good man is a great team and a, and a great <laughs> woman as well. So no question, no question. And um, you know, I am, I am, I am very fortunate. You know, I've been, I've been married now 25 years, and um, I am very, very fortunate. So um, and and my staff here is incredible. Um, you know, they they absolutely love people. They love this ministry, and um, I mean, and I couldn't I, I couldn't and wouldn't wouldn't ask for anything better. Amen. Listen, let's touch thank and agree, you. and let's yes, ask the, our viewers to pray with us. Yes. Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for 
ruling and reigning in our hearts and our minds. I thank you for the Western Carolina Rescue Ministries. I pray for the board. I pray for all the staff and all those volunteers that are being your hands and feet here. We even pray with our viewers that you would move in the hearts of people to yes. raise their hand like Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me, that you would bring uh, the church to the front lines to, uh, to love on them unconditionally, to be instruments of grace in your hand, agents of change. God, that we know it starts uh, in the heart and it's uh, manifested through our lives. So we just pray again as they continue to be salt and light here in Asheville, North Carolina, God, your Holy Spirit would just flow through them, uh, that it would even have its ripple effects in through the government and community leaders, that there would be change and revival in this city, and ultimately that names would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, mm -hmm. and that resources would be brought in, yes. that they can do exceedingly abundantly, more than we can ever think or ask, according to that power that works in us. So we pray that you bless this ministry and help take it to the next level. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Until our next episode of Revelations, may you and your families be blessed.